thanks for sticking with us. Um, well, today we're gonna begin talking about uh, computers. Yeah, what a surprise, right? Well, computers are everywhere, and that is indeed an advantage, but nowadays can be also a disadvantage. And you may be wondering why, but we'll go over all those things. Now, the thing is that when the K-Pro was first introduced, you know, our computer, our gadget of the day, uh, there were very few computers around and actually it was a privilege to actually have access to one to a computer because they were more for scientists nowadays everybody and I am not kidding when I tell you everybody and their dog have a computer okay computers are absolutely everywhere so let's start by looking around and looking at where computers are hiding so where is the computer if you take a look around, of course, if we begin with the classroom, we know where they are. They are desktops. We're used to looking at them. And, uh, uh, but they have been shrinking and they have been hiding. For example, in your car, many cars are actually, you know, helped in guidance by computers. There's computers within your smartphones. And maybe that's kind of a little bit more obvious, but there is also computers in your appliances. In here I put a microwave, but in many other appliances around your house, there is little computers embedded, embedded within. And of course we have robots, and robots are nowadays kind of everywhere. And I say that robots are everywhere because you know there's a lot of robotics competitions. And of course, robots are like the embodiment of computers, you know, computers turned into something more fun that can actually do stuff for us, okay? But computers are everywhere, so where is the disadvantage of that? Well, the issue with that is that if computers are everywhere, we don't notice them. So we believe that we actually know computers and that we can do things with computers because we tend to think, yeah, they are there, they are there, and they don't bother me, I can, I can deal with them right but in reality there is there is a difference between ac using the computer and actually knowing and understanding the technology within okay but just to emphasize the point that computers are everywhere let's take a look at all the places where we're going to be finding computers just within our course so as we know this course is an online course with these cable components so where are the computers First of all, email. I don't know if you knew that this, but email is the most widely used computer technology available. You know, so most people actually, if they don't have anything else, at least they will have email access. Social media, which most people know it as Facebook. You know, it's very uh, prevalent right nowadays. However, it is, um, there is not just Facebook for the socialization, but there is also networks like LinkedIn that allow you to do more uh, professional networking. We have the World Wide Web, which I may insist that it is not the same as the internet, but we're gonna touch on that later on within the class. We have video conferencing, which you can translate as Skype. And I remember myself growing up and wondering, wow, I wish it, that sometime we could actually talk with somebody and actually see them at the same time. And nowadays I have that in my phone and probably you do too. We have course management systems which have revolutionized online education, and in our case, that translates to Lao Lima. Chat rooms, which are, you know, used, but it sort of translated into instant messaging and into texting, you know, but chat rooms were like big about 10, 15 years ago. We have discussion boards, which are part of Lao Lima in online education, and if we continue on, we also have more things such as cell phone technologies, Skype, FaceTime, and just one last thing before I talk to you seriously is talking is cheap. Okay, so as you can see, we started with things that are, you know, technology in many different aspects and then I pound you with four different technologies that are all about communication. Well, let me tell you this. In the 40s and 50s, which I was not here yet, but in the 40s and 50s, uh, people will talk. You know, they will talk or they will write, you know, the US Postal Service, you know, you just write something, you talk something, but that was it. Whatever you would say, it was gone with the wind. 
Nowadays, that is not the case. If you type something, if you write something, that can come back and hunt you any time in your life. If you write an email to somebody, keep in mind that somebody can make a mistake and reply to all, okay? And uh, send it, forward the email, okay? You could uh, write something in Facebook and then a lot of people are gonna read it and we will discuss in this class how people can be fired for the comments that they do, that they write down in social networks. So, my point here is that nowadays talking is cheap, but I am talking about just not talking like verbally, but writing and communicating is cheap. But that doesn't mean that you have to take the opportunity and just talk and express yourself and be yourself. You have to be responsible and think where can I, where and how can I express myself without damaging both your reputation and the reputation of others, okay? Keep all that in mind. Let's continue. So, we talk about all these technologies and I ask you, are you computing literate? So what is the deal here? Let's talk about computing literacy from its definition, okay? So if we look at the definition, we see that uh, to be computing literate means to be familiar enough with computers to understand the capabilities. So that's one thing, you know, the capabilities. Limitations, so, and to use them efficiently, responsibly, and ethically, okay? So, let's think about this. You can use computers, right? And the problem is that a lot of people believe, oh, I can use the computer, so therefore I am computing literate. I mean, I don't need to take that class because you know how, you know, you feel like that. Here is the way that I want you to look at this, okay? We become literate in our language when we speak the moment that we learn to write and read that language, not when we begin speaking. Therefore, you can have a baby or a toddler, let's say a toddler, uh, that can ask you for juice, can tell you when they need to go to the restroom, or can tell you if somebody's knocking at the door, and they can communicate, they can use the language, but they are not literate because they cannot read it and they cannot write it. So, are you really computing literate? That is the question. So, just keep it in your head and let's try to answer it as, as we look at different um, uh, aspects of it and we relate them to the definition of computing literacy, okay? So let's go on. So what are the benefits of computing literacy? And remember, we're gonna relate this to our definition. To understand the implications of technology use in your personal privacy, okay? In this case, you have to think that you have to be responsible and you have to be, you know, use this ethically. Second thing, Understand ethical and legal implications of technology in your life. Well, again, you know, this is about ethics and about responsibility because we're gonna be, you know, stay legal. To be able to protect yourself and your loved ones online from viruses and threats. Now, this one talks about your limitations, your responsibility as well, you know, and uh, you have to be able to be um, ethically responsible and to know the limitations, I'm sorry. There you go. Now, what else can we get in here? Let's continue with the benefits. We need to properly configure software and hardware to suit our needs, okay? So that's understanding the capabilities, limitations, and the effectiveness of the technology. To become a savvy computer, uh, savvy consumer, you know, that it's actually all of the other ones, you know, all of the different things that are related to computing literacy. To perform basic computer maintenance, okay, again, you understand your capabilities and limitations within your technology, and to be able to migrate into newer technologies, again, you know, capabilities and limitations. The idea is as follows. Many times people are like, oh, this computer is getting too slow. So let me just sell that computer or throw it away or donate it, whatever, and I'm gonna get a new one. But that is not being computing literate. A computing literate person will say, mm, can I just upgrade my computer, which they will know how to, by the way, or should I just buy a new one? What is most cost effective considering what you need to do, okay? So this is just one of the things that we're gonna be learning in here. But there is one other thing that I want you to consider. 
Even though we have technology all around us, technology does not dictate what we do. People still are the, the you know, the basic um, component in any information technology system. Let's take a look at this. So in an information system, first, we know, as I mentioned, that people are the most important part of it, okay? So we have our input, our computer system, and our output. So that's what we see, you know, what you put inside and what you get out. However, all of this is managed by people and it's actually created by people. So people are the most important part of it. I want you to keep that in mind throughout the course, okay? And I want you to keep that in mind as we move on with other different technologies. So what else are we gonna be looking at? We're gonna continue with technology uses. We're gonna have a lot of other things that we are going to be covering today. So, now we got the gist of it, and now, you know, you're gonna continue with my colleagues and they are gonna take you into one of those little things, you know, thing by thing, different places, and different technologies used for different things. This is gonna get really interesting, so please stay right there.